Hey, hello everybody, Disciple here with Overwatch Curios. Today I'm going to be joined by Convertible, who you guys have seen on the channel before. He is a shot caller both in Grandmaster Solo Queue and also on semi-professional Overwatch teams. And today he showed me a really awesome strategy that you guys can use in Solo Queue to win an absurd percentage of your games. Now Convertible uses this in scrims to play against other professional Overwatch teams and it works to amazing effect. And he's also taken it to Solo Queue where obviously it's impossible to pull off 100% of the time with random teammates, but when the strategy does all come together, it is almost unbeatable. And it's a really, really cool thing using Overwatch's newest character, Doomfist, and I'm gonna let him tell you guys all about it and show you how to execute it specifically on King's Row. And if you guys want to see more from Convertible, he streams Grandmaster Shot Calling and Scrims at twitch.tv slash nobel. There's a link in the description and he should be live right about now. Now anyway, let's get started. All right, all right. So tell us about the strat. So you want to start off with Lucio, Anna, McCree, Doomfist, Zarya, Ryan. McCree can be swappable for Soldier. Depends on if their Soldier has high ground or not. And if you're more comfortable on McCree, then go McCree. If you're more comfortable on Soldier, go Soldier. Okay, but the I idea feel like of I saw McCree... Envy run a very similar comp today in Contenders. I wasn't watching that. They, they ran uh, McCree, Doomfist, Reinhardt, Winston. And then I believe the supports were on Lucio. Mm -hmm. And the, the Doomfist McCree was absurd. It was effect on Doomfist and Taimu on McCree. Yeah, it's an insane, it's an insane combo right there. All right, so so once you have that combo, if you can get your team to choose it, what what are some of the things you can swap for maybe? Because it's pretty hard to get people to play specific heroes in comp all the time. Mm, well, Ryan is absolutely necessary. You could get a Zen instead of an Ana. You could get you know, Soldier instead of McCree. Doomfist is pretty necessary. That's that's the whole play on this, is double pick, or double charge, rather. Okay, where you so have Reinhardt Doomfist. charge and you have Doom charge. And you could probably convince your off tank to go Zarya, because you know, bubble charge is really, really strong, gives the Zarya lots of energy. So if you have double, like, two people that can charge, and Doom especially with a four second cooldown, you're gonna get, like, a lot of energy. Just from your ally bubbles. Check this out. Okay, I mean, I'm a Zarya player. I, I, I like throwing him on the Doomfist. Um, all right, so you've, you've got your comp or something close to it, and then how do you how do you execute it? So you want to exit out or spawn and then go rotate over to the main gate. And always, always see what the other team gives you. You should always see what they give you. Like, I'll, I'll call that out to my team multiple times. Hey, let's see what they give us. Because it's not more of a give-take at the moment. It's more of a, okay, well, we'll have what we can get, and then we'll get greedy. If they give you this little area right here, then you should uh, aggress on to here if they're shielding you that way. But otherwise, you can go over here. Now, ideally, on defense, there is a soldier over there or over there. So you send your Doomfist to go tackle the soldier. But if you, um, if the call is not made, if there's no information on what's an upper, then um, have your McCree stand here and try to 1v1 the uh, soldier in upper clock while Ryan and Doom and Zarya start initiating here. While Anna Lucio stays back a little bit and um, peel for each other. Okay, sweet. So you're just sending Reinhardt and Doomfist in to just try and get picks with their charges. Mm -hmm. And how how reliable is that, especially like with the Reinhardt? It it does. It's pretty reliable. I think you usually get, yeah you usually get a lot. I think in our scrims today we got we got one in like the first like 30 seconds of the match. There are misplays that that happen with this strat. So it's very careful to like tell your team. Hey, if we pin someone and we bubbled our Ryan, that means our Zarya is pretty much like half charged, so we should definitely like aggress. Because Zarya, the whole point of this is to get your Zarya pretty high charge and have the Zarya do the damage behind the Ryan shield. So the moment that pin's like done, the Reinhardt needs to back up, either start swinging or back up and shield the Zarya. Okay, and then hopefully your soldier McCree have taken out the yeah. Hopefully soldier, soldier up on the high ground and on high ground, yeah, can come behind the shield as well. Or I've been like doing like uh, poke damage or decent amount of damage over here, so you can finish up some kills in this uh, this little alleyway right here. And it's a little cut up. All right, so what are what are some heroes that might give you issues or might stop this? Like, what if the enemy Zarya sh shield your charge or something? Junkrats, yeah, Junkrats are really like. I don't think you can do it with, if they have enemy Junkrat. Zarya, um, you can just break 
the bubble. Target focus is a lot more important if you have Zarya. If they have a Zarya, then um, I'd say swap the Ana for a Zen. Because at that point, you want to end fights before they get um, they get value out of their high charge Zarya. Because if you're running double pin, a smart Zarya is going to bubble most of your most of the pin targets and save bubble for pins. So you'd want um, you'd want to run a Zenyatta and focus that Zarya if she's high charge. Okay. Okay. I see. Uh, and then that. So this is a strategy for taking the first point. Um, do you mm -hmm. stay on this comp when you're moving forward? You stay on this until it stops working. It works until it doesn't. Okay. So, basically, the whole idea is to get a constant stagger because it works, and you can see in like in our scrims, we got it to like we got to the last point with four minutes and forty five seconds left, and then it stopped working. So it it works if you get the rolling stagger going, and it's very easy to get a rolling stagger with double charge because that's two insta kill potentials you have. Okay, so like wh when you're taking the point, do you send your doom fist forward to try and uh, get more picks at the spawn, at like the back yeah. spawn? Yeah, everyone, everyone goes except for Lucio. Lucio stays on the cart where he belongs, and you just send um you send your entire team not this far up, but relatively far up to chase kills. Like you'll see you'll see it in um in the vod that we chase kills pretty far. We chase kills even so far as to like the last fight on second point. And while the card is like barely in arches, we fight all the way over here just to get the maximum like amount of alt charge we can get for each free um free poke damage, get free cart push. And out. it's really this entire comp revolves around getting a rolling stagger going. And a lot of teams do not know how to recover from a rolling stagger in um in competitive queue. Yeah, yeah. It seems like in competitive you have people who are just going to run out the moment they respawn, try and join mm -hmm. the fight. It's very difficult to get everyone to, to hold back for a while. Yeah, especially since um, all the characters in this comp are extremely huge impact, but they don't always rely on each other, which creates a false sense of a winning fight for the enemy team when in fact they're not winning. Like, if you pick off our soldier, then that's that's a cool story, bro. Like, we have five of the, we have like two people who can insta kill you. So it, it really does like create a false sense of winning that causes them to um, keep going in thinking the fight's winnable. And I, like, I'm i sure lots of people have seen this where it's like 2 CP sometimes on payload maps where they just teams don't know when to reset. And that's that's where you, where you like capitalize with this comp is getting that rolling stagger going. Okay. So if you if you if someone plays this against you in competitive queue, you say that Junkrat is a pretty good counter to it. Uh, can, just because he breaks Ryan's shield so easy? No, because of the trap. Oh, okay. So and, he, he stops the charges with his trap. Yeah. You just, tr like, if you see, it's... Jerk has just a terrible, like, character to play this comp against. Because there's so much, like, spam damage. Um, Torb shuts his composition down completely. Dang, um, the, the solo queue all-stars. Yeah. Junkrat and Torb definitely shut this down completely. Like, it's, I would say it's near impossible to run. Okay. Um, Dang. Mm, I... You can... It, if you know how to play around a Mei, you can run it against a Mei, but it's not ideal. Those are the three characters that stop it. And what are some of the mistakes that people who run this could make that, like, to make it not work? So, like, say you finally convince your team to get this composition, try the strat, how can you fuck it up? Going too far. Going too far and getting too greedy and overusing your ultimate economy. Okay, so like playing Doomfist. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like that's what every Doomfist does. Yeah, um, you want to definitely keep an eye on your Doomfist. Make sure he charges when bubbles are up. Make sure like he's always in line of sight of Anna. That's why you have the Anna. It's a lot of burst healing on a, on your Doomfist. He's a like 250 health hero that can get shields, but not only that, he's getting pocketed by Anna and getting bubbled. Like that's literally an army of one right there. Okay, but that chasing nasty. too far is probably a huge like misplay that people can make like this is even, even this like unless you know for a fact you have a very good stagger going you shouldn't push this far up the only times we push up is when we know hey we have a pretty good number advantage and we have two things that can insta kill so either way we're okay but if you're down players or anything just you must remember not to get too greedy and if you have to reset, you have to treat the next fight as a 6v6. 
Like everyone needs to engage, create a 5v6 scenario, and then um, commit to the fight. Don't commit ultimates before you have a 5v6 scenario. And so you said that this works particularly well in King's Row. Uh, mm -hmm. Why King's Row more than other maps? Um, the walls. That's why. It's okay. like, you're sur Doom can get, like this right here, this little thing right here, this counts as a wall. Like all the crevices and everything, counts, counts as walls, I'm pretty sure. Not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure like there's so many walls. I also know that Reinhardt can, can punch charge. through the uh, the car and the telephone booth on the first point. Like if you're on the other side of the car and Doomfist punches it, it'll like say you're on on the back side of that. Like no right way. Here, yeah, yeah, you'll get you'll get killed by Doomfist if you punch the other side of the wall or the of the car. No way. Oh yeah, it's bullshit. What? Uh, I think I think the telephone booth over to the right as well. Oh wow! Well, yeah, that's all the more reason to run it because there's lots of supports that uh, play here. Yeah, some of those, some of right those here. completely bullshit like doom fist fist moments. So, what are some other maps that you think that this composition could work on? Maybe not as well as King's Row, but that you think that it would still be a, a strong pick. Nepal Sanctum. We ran we run this on Nepal Sanctum as well. Okay, because it's all enclosed and really easy mm -hmm. to get the pins. Mhm. Mm so yeah, on third point. It um it works until it doesn't. That's pretty much yeah. It just works until it doesn't. Right, what's the first swap out you would make if it stops working? McCree to soldier. All right. Yeah, McCree to soldier definitely. Um, and anything else? Mm. Now you just go McCree to soldier. Play soldier behind your Rhine shield. Farm graviton. And went off of graviton doom fist. Cause that's pretty much unstoppable. Okay, comboing the, the two ults together specifically. Yeah, you look for combos. You look for Nano Ryan. Uh, you look for combos with the uh, third point with that comp. So you have Nano Ryan, Nano Zarya, get another Graviton. You have Ryan spring up the grab, get a shatter. It's very, the comp is very like recyclable. Like, if you use a Graviton, you can grab Nano Ryan, give Ryan another shatter. You shatter, have Zarya clean up with their laser or whatever. You don't always have to do grab doom. Sometimes it's better to just grab Ryan or grab Nano Ryan, give a Reinhardt a shatter, and then you know, Doomkist can like use his alt however he chooses. Yeah, it guarantees kills if you use Doomkist alt. But why? I mean, you're gonna get the kills anyway if you grab Nano Ryan. But with grab Nano Ryan, you get another ultimate out of it. So you recycle. For grab, you basically for grab and Nano, you get shatter, basically. All right. All right. Awesome. And I think that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is gonna make you feel better.